Hi, I'm Greg King, Product Manager for DevTools here at Neo4j, and I'm going to guide you through a quick tutorial on using Neo4j Data Importer. So before I go on, I want to explain uh, briefly what Neo4j Data Importer is. So it is a tool to help you think about modeling your graph in nodes and relationships. Um, and it allows you at the moment to supply flat files, either CSV, TSV files, and to articulate how those files should map to the graph model and to help you think about that. Um, so it's really designed to get you started with graphs, get your data in as quickly as possible. It's not designed to replace kind of ETL tools or uh, you know, deal with production volumes of data, but you should uh, find it scales well and easily into the, the millions of nodes and relationships um, and beyond. So to get started, I'm going to first of all show you how we launch from uh, Neo4j Aura. So in Aura DB here, I've created a free instance and I'm going to launch the import tool. The first thing you need to do when you launch the import tool is uh, log in with the credentials that you were provided when creating your free instance. If you don't want to do that at this stage, you can cancel and then reconnect um, when you need to do the import. So you can use it without being connected, but it just makes it a bit more convenient doing this upfront. Um, so one of the uh, next things that I want to do is provide my files. So here I'm going to provide um, three files, an orders file, a products file, and then an order details file. So this comes from the fairly classic Northwind data set that shows how data might be modeled in a relational database. And here I'm just taking a subset of it to um, describe how we would map that into a graph model in a uh, data importer. So we can see here we have the three files. We have the first uh, column showing the column names of the respective files. And then the next column shows a sample of the first row. So you can get a feel of what kind of data um, each of the rows contains. So let's start sketching out the graph model that we think uh, best represents this data. So we clearly have some products, some orders, and then a file um, letting us know how those things connect together. So let's start by creating an order node. So we can label that here as an order. Let's create another node called product. And then let's say that an order contains a product. So let's label that relationship uh, contains. So we've got the direction here, order containing a product. Now the dashed lines here denote the, 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 the fact that we haven't yet fully mapped this, so it's not yet ready to, to load. So let's go about uh, sorting that out and uh, mapping our files to it. So the order file here is the one we want to map to orders. So we'll select the orders file. And then what we need to do for the files is, um, or rather the nodes, is define properties for them um, and how they map to, to uh, how the file maps to those properties. And we have a convenience function here called select from file. And what that allows us to do is quickly generate properties and map them to the columns in that file that we've uh, selected, the orders.csv. So here I'm going to select all of them, but I'm going to take off customer ID an employee ID, employee ID, because they're parts of a wider, more extensive model if we were doing the whole thing uh, right now, but we're not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna add these in. And then the final step is we need to select uh, which is the ID for the, for the order node. So it's fairly obvious here, it's the order ID that uniquely represents that node. And if we go into the mapping tab here, we can see that the order ID property, which has been created for us, maps the order ID, order date to order date, and so on and so forth. And I can, if I want to go and rename these uh, properties, so I could call that just ID to be less of a boast. So it's the order uh, node with an ID uh, property, um, and I can change the type to a number of different uh, supported types. Uh, but I'm going to leave that um, as is for the time being, just uh, for, in the interest of simplicity. So I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, products node. So I'm going to select the products file for this one. I'm going to select everything in here. I'm just going to leave off supplier ID and category ID. Category ID as similarly, they would be uh, other parts of the model we'd map out. And then I will put in the product ID as the uniquely identifying uh, attribute for that. And then the really important part is the contains relationship and uh, uh, and helping data importer understand how to link the order and the product nodes that this load will be creating. So if we look here on the left hand side, we have this order details file, which uh, is effectively a link file telling us how orders with a certain ID link to products with another ID. So order 10, 248 links to product 11. Um, so we use that to, 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 to kind of define how the from and the to mapping works in this relationship. So we will select the order details file as representing what defines the relationship here. So the order ID that we 
uh, property that we created on the order. Remember that was mapped to the order ID column here. And you can see there's a good hint there that 10248 is the same kind of ideas there. So here we're saying that the order ID column within the order details file maps to that property that we've mapped to the order detail node for the from part of the relationship, the bit with no arrow. And then the to end of the relationship uh, maps to uh, products and the uh, product ID is the thing that uniquely identifies out there. So we want to select the product ID, which is product 11 in this particular example, uh, at the end of the relationship. And we can optionally here for relationships specify properties for the nodes too. So I'm going to select these three properties here that tell us information like how many of a particular product were in an order. Um, I'm not going to add these product ID and uh, order ID because they're already telling us how the relationship works. That's kind of extraneous information. It's already encoded in the relationship. So if I confirm that, we are pretty much done. So now I'm in a position where I can preview uh, my graph. So here I'm going to be looking at uh, uh, what's going on and just checking that my mapping is kind of all taking shape as expected. So if I press preview, it's going to kind of take the first few rows from each file. So it's not going to load the full thing and it's going to show me um, how that all relates and how, how all that stuff links together. So here we can see kind of quite a cluster of things all connecting together. And this is maybe not unexpected for this data. So if we remind ourselves, I'll just zoom into maybe a particular part of the model here, we can see a node 17. So if I just refresh myself on the colors, so the lighter green is the product and the darker green are the, are the orders. So we have, uh, uh, yeah, so we have, um, an order here, 10346, contains a product. So we can see that lots of uh, different orders contain particular products, and I guess that's what we'd expect to see here. Now, this preview is not going to show me um, all the uh, properties mapped in the node at this stage. This is just, uh, at this stage, the preview is just giving us a view of how stuff connects. So don't necessarily be worried if you don't see uh, full details of properties appearing on the preview at this stage. It's just helping you understand how the whole thing kind of links together. And then if we uh, run the import, um, we will now be loading data into our instance. Um, and we then see that this um, relatively small import completed in three seconds with no errors. And we see that it created 830 orders for 77 different products and uh, a little over 2000 uh, contains relationships across those, those orders. So we can now go into Neo4j browser and we can take a quick look at that to see if that works um, exactly as we expected. So we just need to uh, re-authenticate here. And once we're authenticated, we can run and see the first 25 relationships created here. So we can see we have an order node with all its properties and a number of products and some of the attributes on those relationships too. So that all seemed to work pretty well. Um, what I can show you next before uh, completing uh, this short tutorial is a slightly more extensive example. So if I open uh, here, you can see in this menu, you have features to uh, both open models on their own without the data or open a zip of model and data. And similarly, the complement to these is you can download, for example, I could download this model or download the model with the, the files that I provided. Uh, or you clear out the, uh, the whole canvas completely so you can start afresh. But I'm going to open in this example a uh, model with data and I'm going to select the fuller Northwind uh, data model here and data files. So this is loading up uh, the fuller list of files. So we can see territories, suppliers, shippers. I won't go through all of the details here, but you can see a much more extensive model here. And um, we can see the part of the model that uh, is mapped here. So order, and in this example, it's chosen to kind of depict the relationship as order, as an order orders a product rather than an order contains a product, but the, the concept is the same. And there are further parts of the model here. So we can see how uh, in this example, the order details file is used um, to denote the relationship between the order and the product. And in this example, it is in fact the order file or the orders file rather that denotes the link to the shipper. So let me just drill into that to give you a bit more context. So the shippers here are uniquely identified by the shippers file. So this node creates all the instances of the shippers, but the ships relationship is derived from the orders file, which if you recall from when we first mapped is the same file that, um, uh, that we were using um, originally. So if we look here, it's ship via 
is the shipper ID. So three in this particular data set happens to be the ID of the shipper. So the shipper ID, ID here is mapping to ship via and the order ID property is mapping to the order ID column in this orders file. So there are lots of different ways in which you can you can use the flexibility of this mapping functionality for relationships. And it, it sometimes takes a little bit of time to get your head around those concepts, but there is a, a lot of flexibility behind it. And then the final thing I'll mention in this um, uh, kind of model here is there's a self relationship. So you can also choose to do things like map nodes to themselves. So in this example, we're using the employees file to denote reporting lines. So an employees file here, um, if we scroll down, uh, where is it? Here we have the employees file that also tells us how somebody reports to somebody else who's also referenced in this file. So this is not this file is not just letting us create the employees here by mapping in all the details of the employees and their IDs, but it's helping us describe how employees report to other employees that are created as part of this load. So um, we hope you enjoy using Data Importer to um, do your graph modeling and mapping from flat files. If you would like to review this video tutorial at any time, you can access it via the welcome tutorial here. And you are also free to review the more extensive um, example that I just loaded here um, from this re review and example link. Okay, thank you very much for watching and uh, good luck.